I told you yesterday, don't forget the angels. No. Because angels, well, we won't look it up right now, but the Lord said through the Apostle Paul that the principalities and powers, we're not talking about the bad ones because he's talking about angels. The principalities and powers shall be made known the wisdom of God through the church. That's right. So we have to keep reminding people of it and find the angels and where they fit. So right here in the book of Hebrews, if I only had two books of the Bible, I'd have the book of John and the book of Hebrews. If I only had one book, I'd go to the book of Hebrews. Now start there and then, and that's, that's like beginning at the back of the book. <laughs> And did you, did you see that where Pat uh, Robertson was was interviewing Corey Ten Boom? No. She said, "Well," and you know she had that real yeah, sweet right. Dutch accent. Right. She said, "Well, I want to see if the book is worth reading or not." So I take a peek. See, oh yeah. Okay, I'll go back and read. <laughs> and then she said, and I took a peek at the Bible. Yes, we need to read the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. She, 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 she's nice. So now, if you, if you, you want to turn in your Bibles, it, it's in the 12th chapter of the, the book of Hebrews, right after the Hall of Fame of Faith. Right. in the 11th chapter. And he said, he has done something better for us. So, oh, let's see, Lord, where should I begin? Uh, well, he was talking about Esau. Um, verse 17, for you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. What'd he do? He just, just kind of kissed it off. I'm hungry. I've been, I'm, I don't care about that birthright. Give me that. Now, once he'd done that, It was pretty well over for him as far as that birthright was concerned. Now, who was the brother? Jacob, who became Israel. There you have it. The plan of God was performed by the rejection of the other one. Yeah. Not because God pushed the other one away. No. The other one rejected. Yeah. Now, you're going to see that's a type and shadow when we get over to Jesus, they will reject that's and he'll it. turn to the Gentiles. Wow, but now, then Jacob became Israel. Anyway, let's go in here now. Um, All these Bible stories are not stories. They're connected. No. They're connected. Verse 20, for they could not endure that which was commanded if so much as a beast touched the mountain that shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart, so terrible or awesome was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But you come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect or complete, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and the blood of sprinkling that sprinkleth better things than that of Abel. <laughs> there it is right there. That's it. The mediator of the new covenant. Yes, yes. It's a different mountain. It's not Sinai. No. And because he just said it. And he described it burnt on the top. I, I teach the Bible school students. I've been there. I saw it with my own eyes, that mountain. And I was not living for God when I saw it. And I remember being there and seeing this, and, they, and, and it's in Arabia, it's in Saudi Arabia, and it's called the Burnt Mountain. The top of it, Brother Copeland, is still black burnt to this day. They have fencing around it now. There's all kinds of things there, and even Paul will tell you, 
um, Mount Sinai in Arabia. That's where he went. That's where he went. It's not over where and other people, people have the idea that he was there uh, three years. It doesn't say how long he was there. And uh, I asked Rick about that, and he th- he went back and read it. He said, well, he said, I, d- I don't know why I hadn't seen that before. Well, I didn't either. Brother Hagin is the one that brought it up. Mm-hmm. He spent so much time with the Lord in vision form mm-hmm. that, that Jesus actually taught him things mm-hmm. personally. Well, I and believe it, like he did with Paul. Paul said he was taught of, yes, mm-hmm. of Jesus. And we needed him. I say this, and people will get mad at me when I say this, and, and I'm, not, I'm not hating on Moses. Paul is our Moses. Mm-hmm for the church, for the Gentile, to explain sure those is. things that we didn't have. A, we and were strangers, get us out of the wilderness. We were strangers and aliens to the covenant. He's explaining the covenant to yes. us, but it's a new covenant with a different mediator, not Moses now. It's Jesus. Jesus said that while he was here on the earth. Absolutely did. And this is why the Esau of Jesus' day rejected him. They could not let go of circumcision is your righteousness. No, it's not. It's a symbol of it, Mm -hmm. and they they could not let go of Moses. And faith in it. Right. David, he's less than 20 because if he'd been 20 years old, he'd been in the army. All of his brothers were there. He just went up to take some food to his brothers. And the king said, you can't fight him because he you're just but a youth and this man has been trained for war all of his life what was his answer that uncircumcised philistine right. doesn't have a chance against me that's covenant he said i killed a lion and a bear with my bare hands and he compared the giant to the lion and the bear because the lion and the bear had no covenant. That's right. And he was charged with the duty of keeping his father's sheep. That covenant gave him dominion. Yes, it did. Over a lion and a bear and that guy. This is the reason he's a man after God's own heart. He lived by covenant. And he, and, (laughs) and the, here's another thing. You know, Goliath went roaring around at him. He paid no attention to his size or how loud he got. That's right. And it, it, it wasn't any of the Hollywood thing. <laughs> it says he ran after him. Oh, that's right. And he put that stone in that sling while he was running. That's right. And he said, I come at you in the name of the Lord God, the Lord of hosts. So now he put the angels to work. Yes, he did. That's right. That uncircumcised Philistine, I'll kill him. (laughs) Now notice what he didn't do. He didn't pray to God to send an angel to kill him. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. He used the word. He used the word. And the angels backed that. Yes. Because of demeanor. So, now you can imagine all the practice he had. Now I tried this. I made me a sling. Mm. Listen. You kill somebody with that thing so easy, particularly if you got rock placement. <laughs> and one of these, right there. Amen. Then he climbed up on him. <laughs> it finished Took his sword and cut his head off. That thing had to be big as a basketball. He's got this head. So th- this is his... This is his badge of battle. It frightened the whole Philistine army. And the, 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 uh, the ir- irony of it, they ran back to Goliath's hometown and David is running do- down Main Street with Goliath's head in his hand. <laughs> then he goes back and I guess his mother said, you're not bringing that head in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's a teenager. <laughs> 
So he put the man's armor in his tent. <laughs> Scripture says he, he went to Jerusalem. Yes. After we took that all the way there. Look, no. I, got, I, I can't let go of that covenant relationship with him. He did that all of his life. Yes, he did. Even when he sinned terribly. Yes, he did. Instead of running from God, he, he ran, ran straight to him. To him. Yes, he did. Ran straight to him and just and just sang his heart out before him. He sang the Psalms to him. And, uh, and it hit me. He's, David is in the bosom of Abraham and Jesus is inside there going on the 22nd Psalm. Don't you know David is saying, he's using my stuff. Yeah, he is, yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. He's, he defeated hell with what I sang. Now that's no accident. The man after God's own heart wrote the psalm that Jesus went into hell with and defeated the devil. And by using that psalm, the glory of God raised him from the That's exactly right. That's what Psalm 23 was when he was in the grave yes, yes. and walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Psalm 24 is when he came out of the grave. Yes. So he wrote all three of those yeah. that are right there. And they're in the right... Order. And they're in order. Because he's in God that's in order. He's decent in an order. That's the way he does that. Let me, let's get, I want to get back to this. Cause I, cause I, promised, I promised a verse yesterday. Yes, yeah, go. In, oh, in Second he's Peter. promised verses coming. <laughs> I'm excited. In Second Peter, okay. we have a high priest, Mount Zion, not Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is in the wilderness. We're in our promised land. We're not in the wilderness anymore, church. <laughs> we, we are in our land. We are in our covenant. Now, if America has a covenant and the church, but then why is, why is so much bad happening? I looked now over show here. Show me some of that. Where are you now? I'm in 2 Peter chapter 1. Yep. And uh, Peter is becoming old. He's about to give up his body. He's about to die. And he says, uh, verse 11, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom, there's that everlasting again, mm -hmm. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in this present truth. Mm -hmm. That's our new covenant. Yes. That's these mm -hmm. epistles. Mm -hmm. That's the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Be established in this present truth. Tying that back to Sinai. I can't go back and live in Sinai when I'm in Christ that's in this it. present truth. And I believe that's the great falling away that's happened so much in the church. Mm -hmm. They're trying to go back to other things or forward to other things mm -hmm. and not remaining and in the present truth. you said that in the truth. book of Galatia. Have you, have you fallen from grace? Have you gone back to the law? That's right. Instead of faith? And it is by faith that it might be by grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you continue to read there, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Look at this now. Mm. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came a voice to him from the excellent glory, yes. this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Well, he was standing there when that happened. We have also a more sure word of prophecy wherein you do well and take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. And Oral Roberts took that and he said, and said this to me. He preached it there what, as long as he was there to war you. This is an excellent ministry. Mm -hmm. This came from the excellent glory. So we must have excellence of faith, excellence of ministry. And every professor, every teacher in this university must have excellency in their background and while they're here. Yes. And just went over that with me, over it and over it and over it and over it. And then I, I finally came up with a message on the excellence of ministry, to be brutally honest with yourself and be brutally honest with God, walk straight in all manners of life, 
if you're going to preach this holy gospel. And uh, then I realized, ooh, I got to practice what I preach. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to thinking about it. And I thought, well, I've been talking about my grandfather being blood Cherokee. I was satisfied with that. And I'm talking about that, and then I thought, so, and you've heard me say this before, I'm quite sure. But then my granddaughter, Rachel, did a DNA test on me. Hmm. And it came back. The Irish showed up from my dad's, Scots Irish. And, uh, and then some other stuff, but it just didn't say anything about it. She called me back. She said, Papa, I found out why. She said the Native American people won't give that huge database their markers. Mm -hmm. They don't trust them. She said, I found a company that specializes in that. And I said, well, let's do it again. It was there. There it was. Plus two tribes I never heard of. <laughs> so I framed it and put it on the wall of my study. <laughs> now I can talk about it. But with excellence in ministry, I could not bring that up anymore. Okay, let me show you this. If this is this present truth, keep going where you stopped right there. Verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is for any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This present time is people moved by the Holy Ghost. And then he starts talking about false prophets and teachers. I had somebody ask me not too long back, what prophet do you follow and what prophet are you under and what prophet guides you? And I said, excuse me? What prophet guides you? I said, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And if I'm gonna pick a human, I knew where they were headed. If I'm gonna pick a human person, well, it's Brother Kenneth Copeland. He's my spiritual head. He's that I'm submission to him. And they said, oh, well, we have many prophets we follow. And I thought, this is this present truth. Mm -hmm. And everybody's looking for a quick spiritual answer to what's wrong with America. Praise God. And the quick spiritual answer is us walking in our covenant and teaching our covenant beyond the contradiction that we see and hear on the news every That's single right. day. That's right. That's right. That's it. That we've been establishing this. And hold in clear reverence that the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Whether it's here or where it, whatever nation it is, wherever it is, I don't care if it's a tribal people somewhere that never heard of God or anybody else, that's the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. And you don't hear anybody saying anything about it. And... Uh, but if you, and, and uh, look at this. We have a more sure word of prophecy wherein too you do well that you take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, the day star arrive in your heart. What is that? Well, I can tell you what it's like to somebody that travels all the time. You get into this hotel room, the restroom's around there. You get into this hotel room and it's over there. You get into that hotel room and it's back here. And one night I got up. I was still asleep. And I got up and I turned this way and I hit the wall. Mm -hmm. This was back before I had sense enough to take a flashlight with me. I, I just... <laughs> but I carry one with me now all the time to have my light in a dark place. Hey. <laughs> I, I carry it. It is right in here <laughs> all the time. And I have extra batteries in there so I don't get caught in a dark place. <laughs> so I hit that wall and then I couldn't find it. I was lost in my own hotel room Ah, uh, there was light coming under the door. And I thought, oh, okay, that's the front door. Okay, it's over there. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. That taught me that verse. Amen. So that 
we also a more sure word of prophecy. This book right. is the more sure word of prophecy. And if what you prophesy doesn't match this book, mm-hmm. bingo. Right. More sure word of That's prophecy. Right. You take all of the prophetic statements of this book. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart or until you see the light coming under the door of the motel room. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's there are false of, prophets. Our, that's part of our present truth. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Another one that's part of our present truth is Second Chronicles seven fourteen, which we yes. talk about for our country. Yes. If my people, which are called by my name, there's covenant. Mm-hmm. Yes. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Notice, forgive their sins and heal their land. That's the ministry of Jesus. Jesus was always forgiving somebody of their sins mm-hmm. and healing. That's, that's right. Present age. Yeah. Healing and forgiveness of sins and always go together. he talked about the government. He talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. The killing of the prophets. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. But that goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Yes, it does. And it, <laughs> he, he, he referred to these, all these things and referenced them. He did not say anything in his life or ministry that was not already written. He referred to Scripture and he kept referring to the Psalms. Mm-hmm. The only way you're going to be able to destroy America is to remove the covenant people from America. And that'll only happen <clears throat> when the trumpet sounds. Now, the place we where go. we don't see it anymore <clears throat> is after the catching away of the church. That doesn't mean it ceased to exist. Mm-hmm. But, of course, it'll be a part of it because it's, it's part of all that. Mm-hmm. Well, then, <clears throat> so much that is referred to in the book of Revelation about the people that it will accept him during, during that him. time has got to be connected to the United States. That's right. And it may be just a whole lot of them because I'm, 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 I'm totally, completely convinced of this. Jesus came back for six weeks Yes, he did. A month and a half and appeared to people. And we're out of time. But I believe that's going to happen again. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. We'll be back in just a moment. Discover how simple the answer to every question and every problem in life can be. In God, the Covenant and the Contradiction, a new book by Kenneth Copeland and Greg Stevens. In this approachable book, dive deep into what a covenant is and what it's for. Discover what your covenant does for you and learn to overcome every contradiction and obstacle. With every covenant promise comes a contradiction. When you read in the Bible that by Jesus' stripes you're healed and the diagnosis comes back incurable or when you're facing a towering stack of unpaid bills, when you read that God promises you prosperity, common sense and human reasoning rise up to shout, there's no way that God's promises will happen in your life. Thank God, covenant men and women throughout time have refused the contradiction and praised through in faith to the end result, the blessing promised by God, and you can too. See the Bible unfold more clearly than ever before in God, the covenant and the contradiction. God, The Covenant and the Contradiction by Kenneth Copeland and Greg Stevens. Available now for pre-order for only $26.99 on kcm.org slash TV Covenant. Discover the rich inheritance God's love has provided for you, spirit, soul, and body. Overcome every contradiction and obstacle and receive God's covenant promises for a victorious, abundant life. 
All pre-orders will begin shipping in September, free standard shipping included. KCBC is where I built a solid faith foundation before I started my career. With our busy schedules, finding a college with a close community and shared values was so important to us. And we found it here. At KCBC, I renewed my identity in Christ. I got a second chance and found my purpose. I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a community of family and faith here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Through practical and classroom education, get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry with faith, integrity, and excellence. Get hands-on ministry and outreach opportunities, discover new gifts and talents, and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. Find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. When you pray, believe you receive it, extraordinary, unusual provision. My only God. Jesus came with an assignment to destroy the works of the devil, to redeem us. And when the time was right and he came and he fulfilled his assignment, Satan had to stand by and watch it happen and couldn't do a thing about it. Number one, don't use the Word of God for personal advantage. Number two, don't you associate with wicked people even for the attainment of a good end. And then third one, never perform a godly act in a prideful spirit. We praise the Lord! We praise the Lord! They said, what kind of man is this? Shall I tell you? A faith man. Come on. He did everything by faith because it said he perfectly pleased the Father. Join us for the 2023 Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. Register at kcm.org slash swbc today. This book is pregnant with revelation, but you have to live in it to get it. And we'll talk some more about it tomorrow. But until then, remember this again, that God loves you, and we love you, you. and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.